Today is Monday, August 21st, 2017. The eclipse, baby, run for your life. This is the Service Monster Show. This week in social media. So a handful of changes to our beloved social platforms. LinkedIn gets a native video, which ought to be interesting. Twitter is now doing algorithmic categorizations and allowing you guys to peruse via that instead of the good old hashtag. And Facebook is now creating its own trending news feed only on the mobile platform. Look for those in the show notes. The huge convention. So last week, some of the sales staff attended the huge convention. We had so much fun meeting you guys. There was a, a couple salespeople at the booth and they had a, just a blast talking to you guys and glad handing, hearing about you in, in, in an industry that we're not hugely known in. So that's kind of refreshing for us. We're used to going to trade shows and everybody knowing who we are. And sometimes, you know, Talking to clients is nice, but prospects is where it's at, baby. That's why we go to these things. So thank you so much for that. And we look forward to seeing you next year. I will probably attend next year as well. So who knows, maybe um, you know, I'll get a chance to speak with you guys. This month, we still have three webinars scheduled. Go check those out in the show notes, but the one you really wanna pay attention to is the one this Thursday at five o'clock Pacific time. Service Monster 6.1. Special guest Joshua Latimer will be joining me as we introduce the SendGym Radius Bomb integration, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the updates that we've done. I think we're over a thousand features cleared out since our Service Monster 6.0 release in February. This week in Service Monster, so interestingly, little story. We updated our website in February to coincide the release with Service Monster. And I noticed about two weeks ago that we had taken a sudden drop in our rankings. So uh, we are always fighting for the second, third position for one of our major keywords in our vertical market. And sometimes we'd hit one and that had been the history for 10 years. And then we release our site in February and suddenly I noticed now we're sitting at seven or eight. And of course I had some concerns. So I started processing and cleaning up our, our newly released site. I had hand coded this one. We got off the WordPress gig. You know, we did pretty good, but we had a few areas we could improve on keywords, density, uh, you know, that kind of stuff, right? So we went through, cleaned that up, went through these processes. There's all kinds of online tools that you can use for free that will rank your site. Of course, they want to sell you services, but they do a really good job at the value proposition. So you can use their tools and get some insight as to where you're at and why things are wrong. And so we made some decent improvements and I, I hope that will help. But here's the kicker. Yesterday, I found that in March, just a few weeks after the release of Service Monster 6 and our new site, someone graciously paid for backlinks to us, to Indian and Chinese sites that were linked to pirate software, porn, you name it. Google hates that kind of stuff. And that is part of the reason why we fell so hard in our rankings. Now we know for a fact that was done. What we don't know is who did it. As a dark web purchase, somebody paid somebody to post those links on those sites specifically designed to target and harm competitors SEO. Yes, it's possible. Yes, it's done, but you can also combat it. If you're paying attention, again, there's all kinds of tools that will allow you to look at this history for free and you can see bad links that are bad actors or what Google calls bad neighborhoods. You really shouldn't be associated with them. You can create a list and go to the Google site and disavow those links through an upload script. So I would encourage you to go look for that. Look at your site periodically. See if competitors are throwing some money your way. It's not necessarily cheap to do it. And I wonder who has the time and cash and and not winning enough where they feel like they have to tear everybody else's building down in order to build their own up. Again, though, without any proof positive, there's no way I'm going to name anybody specifically, but I certainly have my suspicions. So part of this whole thing has prompted me to take a look at SEO and web providers. I have been a big naysayer in general SEO. There's just so much black hat and gray hat stuff that we don't want associated with our company, but I get, I don't know, hundreds of requests a year. Joe, to talk to me about an SEO guy, refer me to an SEO person. And I just haven't done it because I've never spent money on it myself. Just so you know, over this next few weeks, I've been meeting with SEO professionals locally so I can glad hand with them, kind of look in their eyes and have a conversation. They've got to be smarter than me in SEO, which it's a high bar, but not impossible if you're doing it every day and that's your job, right? No black hat or gray hat ops at all and make it worth my while. I, you know, as opposed to actually hiring somebody internally to manage it, why would I pick them up? 
if I come across one, and if I spend money on them, and if I'm impressed with them, we'll probably put them in our marketplace. So just FYI there, if I suddenly say, hey, I've got an SEO friend, it's not because I suddenly turned a leaf or somebody's paying me to say it, it's because we had actual experience with this company moving forward. But these are the things that you fight with as a business owner, right? I can take my time or I can make my marketing people take their time to focus on this kind of trivial stuff, like the doing the plumbing and the work isn't, that hard and that difficult to learn how to do, but do I want to spend the time of my people's expertise or would I rely on someone from a consulting point of view to make this happen for us? So I'm starting to turn on this a little bit. Oh, who knows, I could wake up tomorrow and just hire someone. Another thing that we worry about that you guys don't really think much about is demo data. For the webinar on Thursday, um, we have done a very good job of banging the drum for window cleaners and pressure washers. So our standard demo for carpet cleaners may not be so great, may not be as relevant, right? And we certainly just can't take one of our pressure washer clients and expose their data. So creating data, generating data that looks meaningful that you guys can see and go, oh, I feel like that might be my business. That's a big effort. I mean, we spend a lot of time, we'll be spending a lot more time on that as we move through these other vertical markets. But just know we spend a lot of time just on demo data alone. Service Monster product updates. So 6.1 was released last week and we all held our breath a little bit to make sure there wasn't any big blowups or business continuity. Glad to say that nothing new was introduced and nothing crept back in that we're aware of. So we're very happy. The engineers are combing through little things here and there. Alex isn't putting anything big on their plate because he wants to make sure that you know, over the next week, the 6.1 rollout did its job. And as you guys feedback any issues that we deem critical, we'll put in a hot fix and roll out as fast as we can. Luckily that hasn't happened yet. So the 6.1 release went off without a hitch and we'll probably do a 6.11 update before the webinar on Thursday. Mobile 3 should be getting an update as well. They're coming through and just addressing a few little things, adding some depth to sites and adding a single button that will launch a Send Gym Radius Bomb campaign on your job. From everyone here at Service Monster, thank you so much for your attention. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, go check out the demo, and give us a call.